number 12 is called two-stroke pull because it's a really gassy affair. We've got five rounds of 300-meter run, 20 calories on the assault bike for our men, 44-foot sled pull at 183 pounds with an 18-minute time cap. I don't think we're going to need the time cap. This is going to be really, really long intensive. We'll have two heats in this first one for the men. It'll be the bottom half of the points leaderboard coming out of day number three. A couple of names, obviously, to keep an eye on. Josh Bridges, lane number six. Alex Smith, lane eight. Saxon Panchik has been good at times this weekend. He'll be in lane number 10. Elliot Simmons, a name that came out of the Meridian Regional in lane 14. But one of the athletes you got your eye on in lane 17, powerhouse athlete Royce Dunn. Out of CrossFit Torian in Bowen Hills, Australia, six foot, 224 pounds. He's got the power to put down on the bike to do really well in this event. And if you don't have power, you might want the engine and the soccer background. Mitchell Stevenson, he'll be in lane four. As the final day now underway for the athletes that make up the bottom half of the point standing, still plenty of opportunities though to make a charge up the leaderboard. We watch the athletes make their way out of the stadium and, and, and Josh Bridges, something doesn't look right there for him with that stride. And you see him in the black shorts getting passed by a few athletes and he's actually gonna find himself in the back of the pack very briefly. It's going to be a long event. If you've got some kind of a, an issue that's going to slow down this run, it's going to be a really long, painful, dragged out event. Now keep in mind, this is the first round. It, it will be tough to get a good visual on where the leader is early as they will be going back towards their lane. So there's a slight advantage on the way out of the stadium, that advantage corrected on the way back in. Brandon with five rounds of run. I'm just watching Josh Bridges come into the stadium now, and, and you can see an obvious limp. He's well behind the pack. Um, with just under a mile of running, this is going to be long and painful for Josh. So they make their way to the assault bike. How do you think if, if, if there's obviously some type of lower body issue going on with Bridges based on that stride, how would that affect the assault bike? Well, I mean, it's less impact. He's not having to bear weight on it. So he, you know, the, the bike is one of those things that we use as a rehab tool. Also with the assault bike, you can use that upper body and you can push and pull. So you can take some of the stress and pressure off the legs if you need to. But the legs is where you draw most of your power from. So this is, it's going to be a, a slippery slope here. So as we make our way through the middle portion of this triplet, uh, what are you looking for for success? Well, Brandon, I think pacing early is going to be important. You don't want to come out too hot because you can blow yourself up and you won't have anything to give on those later rounds. But honestly, I think it's going to be negative splits as we go through. So you get yourself warmed up, you get into a tempo, and then round after round, gradually pick up your pace. It's like shifting, car, shifting gears in your car, just slowly ramping it up until that final round where you hit that high gear. The first man through round number one in the teal shorts is Pablo Chalfoun, the Latin America regional champion, as his name highlighted in blue. But once again, there's going to be that advantage, disadvantage on the way out and in the stadium. So despite being the first one through the opening round, he'll be the fifth one out of the stadium. And with that shifting gear analogy that you were speaking about a moment ago, we're getting out of that low gear into a little bit of a higher gear here in the second round, or would you wait a little bit longer? I, I, for me, I mean, uh, at 43 years old and having done this now for well over 10 years, um, I tend to use, especially on a five-round workout uh, where I know I'm going to have to be breathing heavy for a sustained amount of time, I use the first round, possibly even the, the second round, to warm up my lungs and get everything where it needs to be and I get my mind right and then I can usually pick up the tempo as I go so I think we're going to start to see these guys they're suffering but they're going to pick up the pace first two back into the stadium will be Frederick Agidius and Con Porter they will be in lanes 12 and 9 respectively and Agidius will be the first one back onto the bike for the second round of 20 calories on the assault bike there's a look at Con Porter, Frederick Agidius, and Agidius is just digging early on, and it looks like his strategy might be build up a lot of calories early and then coast it in.
for the most part, the athletes are going at a consistent pace, but Agidius went very aggressive early on the bike. And you never know, with somebody, Frederick's an experienced athlete, he knows himself really well. Maybe he's got got the fuel in the tank that's required to get through this thing. He can try to maintain that pace. On the assault bike, you get rewarded for putting the pedal down really hard. The calories tend to tick away. If you take your foot off the throttle, those calories just seem to linger on and on and on. So it probably pays to, to put the pedal down as hard as you can for 10 or 15 strokes and then just ride it out. Is there any potential that that was a way to kind of test and see how the legs feel going forward for the final three rounds? For sure. I mean, where I do events or workouts in the gym and it's a 20 or 30 calorie sprint, what I try to do is absolutely hammer the pedals for 20 strokes and then I'll ride it out. And if I have the ability to, I'll try to pick it up a little bit. But you want to try to burn those quick calories and then let the bike ride itself out. So as we go into round number three, you'll see the name of Con Porter highlighted in blue as he was the first one through the second round. So he will be the leader. Everybody else will be highlighted in red. On the run, obviously, a little bit harder to track distances, so we will rejoin that scoreboard once we come back into the stadium. But it's Con Porter leading the way. Frederick Agidius in second. Third through the second round will be Craig Kenny, but it's going to be a significant margin back. About a 30-yard advantage, maybe 40 yards from your top two back to Kenny. Kenny moving a little bit quicker, though, on this run. I like what Frederick's doing there. He's keeping uh, Con Porter close in sight. He's just kind of matching stride for stride. I think that's a great strategy. It kind of keeps you moving forward. It keeps your pace honest. I think this run is a, a bit of an interesting point in this event as well. It is an awkward distance run. You're used to seeing 200, 400, maybe a mile, somewhere around there. 300, that's a hard one to gauge. It's a tough one to gauge. And I was, Brandon, I was watching the, the team events uh, just before this. They had the exact same run course, and they were running it in about 52 seconds. Uh, so, you know, it's that sub one minute. You can really push it if you want to, but are you going to pay the price down the, work, down the, down the road? Continues to be a Gideus and Porter, one and two. So they make their way back to the bike for the middle round of five. And as the athletes get onto the bike, let's go to Mike Arsenault for a quick update. Last night during event 10 and 11, Tim Paulson had a really bad fall. He pushed himself to complete muscular failure and just couldn't hold on the bar during the chest of bar pull-ups. Although it looked like he may have hit his head on the floor, his shoulder actually took the brunt of the fall. His wife is a physical therapist and worked on his forearms last night, and he feels as good as he can be this morning considering what the athlete been through so far this week. Thank you, Mike. And, yeah, that was a bit of a scary moment last night with that hard, hard landing. But thankfully for Paulson, hockey players, they're built pretty tough, and he's still competing here to close out the final day. Well, that was a hard event for sure with so much pulling, all the, the snatches that they did with bar muscle ups and chest bar pull-ups. The grip was at complete li the, its limit, and you could see Paulson just fell off the bar. Less than 10 seconds separate your top three. It continues to be Con Porter, but Frederick Agidius with the quicker transition will take a slight lead, and his sled will come across that line or reach that line just ahead of Porter. So it's Agidius one, Porter two. Elliot Simmons continues to close the gap as he sits in the third position. Two rounds remain. We're still 10 minutes shy of the 18-minute time cap. As they work through this triplet of a 300-meter run, 20 calories on the assault bike, and a 44-foot sled pull with that sled weighing 183 pounds. And we talked about it um, backstage, Brandon, that the sled pull, 183 pounds, it's not really heavy. It's not, especially given what they did not even 12 hours ago where they were doing bar muscle ups and snatching and, and chest bar pull ups their grip is completely fried this was not meant to be and designed to be a grip or pulling event this was really meant to test the lungs and your cardiorespiratory system so 
halfway to the time cap. That should not be an issue for much of the field, especially the leaders, as it continues to be a Gideus and Porter leading the way, much like they have really since the opening round. I think this event is a great test of horsepower, Brandon. It's, it's, it's uh, one of the 10 elements of fitness as defined by Coach Glassman is cardiorespiratory endurance, and that's your body's ability to gather, process, and deliver oxygen, and that's exactly what this, this event is testing. Now that could be a big moment. It's a, a small mistake, but it could cost Con Porter as he went to the wrong bike. And that'll be a couple of seconds there. And Frederick Agidius, who has been given it on the assault bike early on, might be taking advantage of that slight mistake. Still one more round remains after this one. Freddie's doing a great job right there, using that upper body to push-pull, try to take some of the pressure off the legs. He's got his chest upright, the best you can do on the assault bike. He's trying to get as much air as he can in and out of those lungs. Judge's hand up, indicating the final five calories on this assault bike in the fourth round. And Agidius will make his way off the bike. And he's going to open up a pretty solid lead over Con Porter. But Elliot Simmons has moved into the second position. As Gideus on to the sled for the fourth time. That sled again, 183 pounds for our international viewers, about 83 kilos. And this has just been consistency for Gideus, making that sled pull just very, very smooth. So Gideus leading the way behind him, fellow European Elliot Simmons, the rookie, out of, competing out of the UAE, sitting 28th in the point standings. He's only a couple of seconds behind Gideus. Simmons, a individual games rookie, has been here before on a team, in fact, stood on the podium in 2016 with CrossFit Yaz out of Abu Dhabi, took third place that year in the Affiliate Cup competition. And he tries to chase down Frederick Agidius. You see the interval, be about 25 yards, the distance between Agidius and Simmons, Porter and Paulson. Not far behind is Con Porter out of the Pacific Regional trying to give chase, but he's lost a little bit of ground. He's lost a little ground, and if I'm watching Freddie way up front, to me, Brandon, it's he's actually opening up his stride. It seems like he's got the, the end of the event in sight, and he's trying to push the throttle. That's exactly what we talked about in our keys. So Frederick Gideus making his way back into the stadium. And amazingly enough, as he makes his way into the stadium for the final time, most of the athletes here had two months to train for the games after regionals. Frederick Gideus had about two weeks. He was an alternate after a disqualification ahead of him out of his region, put him into the games at the last moment. A oh, little bit of training, no problem thus far for Frederick Agidius, and he is going. It is full send on the assault bike for Agidius. And that's exactly what you want to see here. Just hammer the bike. You've got to get off the bike, get into that sled pull, because the sled pull, if you're, you're done in 10, 15 seconds. This has been the strategy in all five rounds for Agidius. Simmons has just been quick and getting faster every single round. Behind them, Con Porter. You see him picking up the pace a little bit from where he's been, but I don't know if that pace is going to be good enough to catch Agidius. Judge's hand already up for Frederick Agidius. But Tim Paulson just crushed the bike off camera. He's actually making his way down the field. And I know a lot of times we'll say the bit of a cliche, where did he come from? But Tim Paulson has come all the way from fourth to first since coming into the stadium. 
And that's exactly what we were talking about, Brandon. Who is going to take that and just sprint right at the very end? It was a hard landing one night ago for Paulson, but it's a great finish to start day number four. He'll take the heat. Frederick Agidius' time, he accidentally clipped the timing chip. So that time, not official. He'll come across at 14.15. It's Tim Paulson at 14.01.64, setting the time to beat. Con Porter will be the third finisher, excuse me, the fourth finisher. Ethan Helbig in fifth. As a Gideus, we're having some uh, scoring issues there. We'll have to wait for the official results. It's Mitchell Stevenson across the line at 14.34. Royce Dunn, the CrossFit total winner, will be our seventh finisher. Next finisher should be John Colty. And the rookie out of CrossFit, Laminin, out of Alabama. Come across the line just behind Brandon Luckett. Craig Kenny closing in on the finish. Saxon Panchik, his sled about to reach the blue in the end zone. Giving chase behind him is Nicholas Lerankar, but it's going to be Panchik that'll take the position. And again, apologies, the finish line is not far behind that blue end zone, so we're getting some of the athletes, chip timers, accidentally crossing the line before they're completely finished. Jared Enderton. Clearly, that is the sign of being finished in this event. There's no accidental timing error there. Good race between Zeke Grove and Alex Smith. Give the position to Smith over Grove. Josh Bridges making his way with the sled into the end zone. And we saw the struggle that he had with what appears to be a lower body injury of some type. But he's still able to beat the time cap at 16 minutes and 8 seconds. And we've got the full field in. And they will be led by Tim Paulson, who this time we can say it with, with good certainty, really came out of nowhere on this one. There's no cliche on that. Fourth to first after they got into the stadium for the final two legs of this triplet. He takes it at 14.01. Brandon, it was an even race. One of the things that we talked about earlier was that these guys would come out a little bit slower and potentially use round one as a warm-up, and Freddie did a good job of keeping it in pace. Con Porter was close for the first several runs. Freddie tended to pick up his pace on the bike, and the sled was smooth for all athletes across the board. Con Porter there finishing up one of his pulls. But the pull wasn't really where this event was won or lost. You could see Con Porter there making a mistake on the bike. Freddie hops on and capitalizes on that mistake. Ripped through that round of his bike. Finishes up that sled pull. He hopped on the bike, and this is in his last round here. You'll see him pick up his tempo and just put the pedals down, trying to get this heat win. But as we look across the field, top center screen, Tim Paulson hammered the bike on that last round. He comes out of nowhere, fourth to first, and ends up taking the heat win with a time of 14.01. And he is potentially in line for his second career top five finish, what might be his fifth top ten, depending on how it plays out in heat number two. He leads the way provisionally after our opening heat at 14 minutes, 1.64 seconds. Elliot Simmons and Con Porter.